Welcome back to That's So Nova. If it's your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Today, we're going to be doing a very fun project. We're going to be making the Ellie sunglass, oh, the Ellie sunglass case by Unicats Patterns. We're going to be making the size medium, and I will have links to where you could purchase a pattern down below. So you're going to get all your, um, you're going to get all your supplies that you need. And I'm, there's some supplies that I'm going to be using that are not in the pattern, um, but in order for me not to cut the zipper tape, I use it. So um, we will be discussing a lot of different methods in this this video. It's not a very long pattern and it's not super detail orientated, but there's different ways to go in about to achieve the optimal look. So what the designer made is this beautiful um, zi zippered um, sunglasses case where you can place it in there. And I use a beautiful Oxford, um, Oxford, canvas think of it as like waterproof canvas except a little bit more thicker just a tiny bit thicker and um, i used white zipper number five and two zipper pulls i always use two zipper pulls whenever i can i as a kid would always like somehow mess up one zipper on my backpack or my jacket or something and i was always so grateful that there was a second one so i can continue to wear the thing that i love so i'm just going to continue down with that so that's one thing i'm doing different i'm going to be using two zipper pulls and these zipper pulls are super cute they look like um the bike locks these are from uh so sweetness i am using white zipper tape from my handmade space i am using some bias tape um fold over and i don't know where i got this from i want to say joann's then you there's only four pattern pieces um there is your exterior your interior your exterior and your interior Two pieces on the exterior have interfacing. You can use fleece and or um, deck of a light. I use Bouncy Firm from Cereal Bag Maker. It is basically kind of like a fleece and deck of a light had a child. This is what it would be. And it gives a nice protection to your sunglasses. So let's begin. In the beginning of this pattern, it's very important to mark all your centers, um, your top and bottom for every the four pieces that you do have. Then, we're going to put these aside and we're going to grab our zipper tape. Now we're going to start on page, I believe it's page nine. Okay. So with your zipper tape, we're going to put it to the side with zipper tape. We're going to match your notch. You want to make sure you're at the top. The top kind of has its shape like a bell, but it has these little T legs. If the T's are going forward, then you're in the right direction. If you're putting it on the bottom when it's a solid curve, you're not going the right direction. So on the top of your fabric, place your zipper and match the notch. Now, she did notch her zipper with eight scissors. There is some great discussion going on in the fabric world about do you, can you, should you cut out um, zipper tape uh, or not zipper tape. I, for one, am not a fan of that, fan of it. And hear me out. I, zipper tape is usually made with some kind of a twill tape and twill tape is extremely strong. But if you remove one of the wefts or weaves, um, it begins to rattle. So unravel, not rattle, <laughs> like old man's cough. No, it's, it, it ravels. So for what I usually do is I usually like iron my zipper tape so I can remove anything from possibly shrinking. And I, I mold it. I'll use a hundred clips, every clip in my arsenal if I have to, but I will curve this baby around <laughs> and I'm okay with it. I'm an over clipper. And I know you're saying, Shnova, why don't you just use one eighth of an inch zipper tape? I mean, not zipper tape. Um, I'm putting like different clips. Uh, one eighth of an inch uh, double sided tape. I was thinking about that when I was first making my first one, but something kept telling me in my gut not to do it. I'm a person that follows my instincts, so I didn't do it. And you will soon see why we are not going to do it. And if you want to use it after you view why we're not, by all means, let me know in the comments how it worked out for you. I'm just, I'm curious. Let's see. We're almost there to the very bottom. All right. Okay. 
nice and beautiful. So we're going to, um, we are going to sew around this using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. So again, you're like, Shinova, you could have used the one eighth of an inch. I'll show you why. So first we're going to, I guess, thread the machine. I forgot to do that. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm sorry about that. I'm like looking for the thread and I'm like, what's going on? Why isn't it not, why is it not threading? Hey, it happens. And definitely not going to edit this out because I'm human. You're human. Or you could be alien or some kind of cool new being, but, <laughs> um, we all make mistakes. That's just part of who we are. So let's do this. I I'm using this beautiful fire red, um, and it's, a uh, made from Kasaya swags, her thread. Oh God, this red is so intense, so vivid and lush. Um, I've sewn with it twice already, and I just want to make more themes with red because her thread color is amazing. It's very epic. It looks like it has its own personal filter. Let's see. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna sew this on with a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. I always backstitch before each, each thing and I'm gonna grab my little stiletto and my stiletto is gonna help me keep the raw edges with raw edges because the zipper tape is going to want to curve into itself because it's it's being placed in such an awkward way take your time if you have a million clips like me you have to take them all down I really like this pattern and I feel like it would be another really cool thing to have for um, craft shows or a farmer's market or selling like, hey, I make bags and I also make matching sunglass or gla eyeglass carriers. You know, it, it, it's a good selling feature. All right, so we're gonna trim those threads really well. All right, and we're going to then grab our other piece and we're going to match the centers and pop a couple clips in here. It's already easy because the zipper tape's already done, um, like sewn down. So you're just now making sure everything aligns. I'm just tucking that Zipper tape under. All right, so now we're gonna sew this with a 3 eighths of an inch. And I'll again, back stitch before and after. It's always easier the second time because everything's nice and flat. All right. So in the next step, you'll see that there, you can definitely do it this way. So many, oh, so many of the people in the testing group have made it this way. Um, I'm a chicken. <laughs> so, all right. So they cut snips into it. So instead, this is why I told you I have pinking shears. I take, and this might be a little bit more longer, and I apologize for that. I wish I could think of a faster way, but this was the way that came to my head, and that's the way I'm, I'm going to show you and teach you. 
I'm going to pink just the fabric and not the tape. And one side, you only could pink it down not that much because you there's a one fourth of an inch, but the other side, you have a little bit more. Okay, we have that. We are going to move it. Then we're going to turn it so right sides out. All right, and then I'm going to top stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away. And you want to kind of use your nails or your finger pads and kind of separate slightly um, the zipper tape. The zipper tape wants to roll in on itself and that's, it's normal. So you just have to kind of put the fabric and the zipper tape a little tension, make it a little taut so that way it doesn't roll in and it becomes nice and even. Take your time. <laughs> It's, I promise you, every time I say take your time, like my 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 body automatically wants to put my the foot to the pedal and go. Okay. Trimming those threads really well. See, that looks good. Apparently I didn't trim these threads. I like you have you ever just keep trimming threads and you're just like, is it a never ending thing? Um, <laughs> please explain. So we have that. We're going to now take our, I know this always freaks everyone out, but this is why it's very important to mark your centers. Um, we're going to separate this. I heard people screaming, don't scream. <laughs> It's going to be okay, I promise. Um, we're going to now put, we're going to put this right sides. We're going to take, um, you can use double-sided tape if you wish, but I'm not. I'm going to put right sides together on this. You can use some clips. It's a straight a, a straight a, edge, but if you want to use um, double sided tape, by all means, go for it. But if you're like, no, I want to try it the other way, you could do it too. So we're gonna sew this at one fourth of an inch. I love the double um, sewing, like having one at one fourth of an inch and then one at three eighths of an inch. It just, to me, ensures that this bag is gonna stay together because it has reinforced stitching. Two rows of stitching is always good. And you don't see when your fabric pulls because it has that secure stitch. All right. All right. We're going to be putting the lining right on top. And put a couple clips in. We're going to do this at three eighths of an inch. to pull all layers so the wrong sides are touching and I'm just gonna put a couple of clips 
I like to put a couple of clips so that way it can all line up because we're going to base this part closed too. All right. So we're going to top stitch using one eighth of an inch and then just continue on to baste it. And use your, again, your, your pads of your fingers to help separate the zipper, like giving that space zipper from fabric. We are going to now start beginning to paint, um, put them together. Oh, wait, that's what I was looking for. I forgot to tell you to base this part together too. So I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna base it real quick, making sure everything lines up. I'm gonna do this from here. Basting it together at one eighth of an inch, it will help help tremendously in the next couple steps. All right. All right. So now we're going to get our zippers pulls. Um, this is what I did. You, I brought the first one together. So I'm going to show you what you could do if you want just one zipper closing to the left. I put my zipper on first. Look inside the bar and there's like a middle bar right in the middle. And I will <laughs> bring both sides to that middle bar. And I'll just push down and it'll zip. So when it's like this, then I could take it if I just want the one zipper pull and just bring it back around because everything's closed off. So I can have the zipper in the middle and not have to worry about anything, any zippers opening. So you would just need to put it on twice. If you want to have a two zippers, I'm going to do one like the pattern. If you want to have two, you could just put it on the other side. Um, it's your, it's really your preference. Okay. So when we're here, we're going to sew a, basically a bar tack so that way we can go from this point to this point. So we're going to draw a line or visualize a line that goes from this part to this part. And you're just going to stitch over. You're just basically connecting. So from here to here, you're going to sew. Back stitch in the beginning and end. And I, I, I do one back stitch over the zipper teeth because then it becomes like a zipper stop. And believe it or not, this is very important because if you get to the next step and you start moving around and your zipper pull comes off, it could be very aggravating and sad and frustrating. So this just helps you not get frustrated. <laughs> I'm all about that. All right. So we have our bar tack. All right. So then we're going to grab our pieces and we're going to turn them um, right sides inside and wrong sides out. 
I'm going to now kind of open my zipper a little bit, but not all the way. And I'm going to clip where the, we, ha we had our center clips all the way around. I really think it's a genius how she did this. I love how it comes together. So when you fold it, it's gonna fold over. Make sure, again, your two notches that you made earlier are together. All right, so we have that. Now we're going to sew using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance to close this. Grab this threads that are keep adding up. Using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance, we're going to close this beautiful pouch and back stitching. Take your time. It's a little bit of a curve, but you got this. It's nothing that is, you know, too big. I think this, this project is super beginner friendly. And again, it ha it the way it's made is really brilliant. The designer is so clever. All right. So now we're going to cut these off, our zipper tail. Put all these threads and I'll All right. So this is where we're going to grab our binding. So we want our binding to be about a half an inch above this top part. Okay. Okay, so a half inch above, and then we're going to sew down the front using a one fourth of an inch seam allowance. So a half inch above that part, and then we're going to do it at one fourth of an inch. Take your time around the curves. If you have to use a stiletto, it does help tremendously for me. It's like uh, having a finger that can get a little bit closer to the needle than you will want your own. <laughs> Raw edges together. So you see how I just opened up that, um, I opened up that uh, binding bias binding it that's how you're going to do it so that way we can get this bind it nice and evenly over it and then back stitch and as you can see i have a little bit of extra and it's okay i'm just gonna let's see I'm going to just cut cut it down to a half an inch above. Okay. Trimming, trimming, trimming. All right. So we're going to open this up and fold it down, that half inch down. And then we're going to just fold it with its natural curve, folding over. And clipping. I'm just putting, clipping this in place. 
And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to fold over that half an inch that we had above. And All right, we're gonna now top stitch this at three eighths of an inch. Back and stitch in the beginning and in the end. And again, if you need to have a stiletto or an awl, it will help out tremendously. If you have to stop and adjust anything, just make sure you're at the needle down position. All right. I'm going to trim all these extra little threads that are hanging on with the fire prayer. And I'm going to open up the, the pouch. I'm going to turn it in on itself. And when I'm turning, I'm going to stick my thumbs in so I can push this out and just... Just going to push the seams out and just roll it between your fingers. It'll help get it molded in place. Use your thumbs for the quarters, the corner areas. Just give it a nice press in. Look at this. So in this area where the corners are, use your thumb pad and just push it in the corner. And it'll get nice and pointy. And you have a really cute sunglass or eyeglass set. And think about it, the, the possibilities are endless. Like you can make these for your kids, grandkids, friends, anything in their, in their favorite fabric. And just really give them a gift that means so much. And it doesn't take that long. And these will really be nice for um, adding on to people like who want like a bag, matching wallet, a matching makeup case. And they also can get now a sunglass or eye reading case. Like I think this is a very cool gift to give, make for yourself. Um, I'm excited that I made it. So if you have any questions or reference to this pattern, please um, leave a comment down below. I'm showing you the uh, medium and the large back to back. And I believe I'm not mistaken, there's going to be a small for children's classes. So I will put the information and link in the description section where you can purchase your pattern. If you have any questions at all, please give me a uh, like comment. I will definitely respond. If you can comment, like, subscribe, and click that notification bell, it'll mean everything. Until the next time I see you, happy sewing. Bye.